Welcome to Portsmouth Now. I'm your host, Rob Lauer. In recent years, Portsmouth has become known as a museum city. From where I'm standing here on High Street, I can see four very different museums, all of which attract visitors from all over the Old Dominion and the nation. What you might not know is that these museums also have education departments, staffed by professional educators who work at creating classes, camps, and special events geared to helping students grasp the Virginia standards of learning. On today's show, we're going to look at the work of those departments. We'll meet some of the museum educators, and we'll talk to some Portsmouth students who recently took part in one of those programs. All of that is coming up right now on this episode of Portsmouth Now. Welcome back to Portsmouth Now. September is back to school month for most students and teachers here in Hampton Roads. If you ask kids if they're happy about heading back to school, most would probably say no. On the other hand, if you ask them if they like to go to the Children's Museum of Virginia, most would probably answer with an enthusiastic yes. What most kids and most adults probably don't know is that everything in the Children's Museum was designed to educate kids, and not just generally. Every single exhibit, attraction, and activity in the museum was specifically designed to teach one or more of the Virginia SOLs, the standards of learning that every student throughout the Commonwealth must grasp in order to pass from one grade to another and eventually graduate. The trick that the museum pulls off is to make these things so entertaining and fun that kids don't actually realize they're learning something. To that end, the museum employs a team of professional educators, some with BAs and some with master degrees in science, history, or art. Recently, we talked to one of them, Emily Kilgore, to find out more about the classes, programs, special events, and day camps that the museum offers throughout the year. I'm here at the Children's Museum of Virginia with one of the educators, Emily Kilgore. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to Thank us. Thank you for having me. And throughout the interview, we'll hear the sound machine from the exhibits next yes, door. Yes, yes, we will. An ongoing sound. But, uh, you know, people probably don't realize that museums have an education program or educators. What exactly does a museum educator do? <laughs> well, we take on the differences in um, helping out with the exhibits outside, making mm -hmm. sure everybody understands them. But our job also is to lead programs for school groups that come in. We have programs that relate to all of our exhibits in the museum, mm -hmm. as well as uh, programs that relate to activities in the SOLs. And our job is essentially to educate the public while they come here. Okay, now I know that you also, like during the summer, you also offer camps to kids. Yes. And you just had a camp today. Yes, my years. first day of my Ancient Worlds camp, and I'm a little little tired. Um, ancient World Camp. So yes. what is that? So we're focusing on different ancient worlds throughout the week. They're going to learn about ancient Greece, Rome, um, Egypt we're going to focus on. I have a little bit of Scottish in there as well because I love you know Scottish history, as mm -hmm. you know. So they are going to do different crafts activities that relate to the ancient writings, ancient art. There's going to be some science involved. It's... A lot of work. And what, what age group are you dealing with? This is six to eight year olds, um, mm -hmm. and it's a group of nine boys, so it's very interesting. I bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, everything in the museum is associated or tied in with the SOLs, the standard of learning. Yes. So, it, really, this is not just a lot, a lot of people probably perceive the museum as being like a theme park or something. Mm -hmm. There certainly is a fun element. It, it is. A lot of fun. They find that they're learning without actually knowing that they're learning. There's a lot of science involved. Mm -hmm. All of our museum exhibits actually relate to the SOL specifically. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is that we've gone through and the uh, the exhibits have been created based on what the SOLs are that are needed most. Mm -hmm. And then we can go back and relate it to the state standards of learning. So not only do we meet Virginia, we also meet North Carolina as well. Okay. So the groups come in and if the teachers ask, we can say you can focus on these areas in the museum because they have to do with the SOL that you're currently with. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the educators also work primarily for the Children's Museum of Virginia yes. because you have so many kids, but also you work like with the Naval Shipyard Museum yes. and the Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center We as well. create programming for the first Saturdays at the Naval Shipyard Museum. Mm -hmm. um, all of those are family fun activities that are all free for the public mm -hmm. on the first Saturdays. So our job is to, whatever their theme is, to create programs that are self-guided as well as guided activities, art, uh, we did a, a Patriot Trail where they learned about spies in the American Revolution for mm -hmm. July. Um, and then at the Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center, we focus on whatever the art exhibit currently up is, oh. and we create activities to relate to that. And you teach art. I know art is not necessarily on the SOLs, but you, you do also we do. You have art teachers. We do. We well. have art teachers. They do art 
camps in the summertime and then we have homeschool art classes during the year. We have them in the fall and the winter and the spring. So there's three different sessions. So this is like a weekday thing? They can and there's two different age groups. There's a really young age group, a, I believe it's three to five, and then we have one that's a little older for the um, six to eight and then nine to twelve. Okay. So. So now the programs that okay, this room here, this is the one of one of the two very large classrooms yes. that you this have. This is our community. science classroom. And, and most of the time these are closed except when, when mm -hmm. schools come here during the weekdays. Yes. And they bring busloads of kids. Yes. And they have hundreds. a choice of hundreds. <laughs> they have a choice <laughs> of basically signing up for a series of uh, or one of many classes that you all yes. have basically made. We do. So uh, now what are some of the subjects that we have, again, classes. they all relate to the SOLs, just mm -hmm. like our exhibits do. So we have ones that relate to the tides and the rotations, changes in the moon phases. Mm -hmm. uh, we go over matter. We have magnets with children that we focus on. Um, there is some that relate to art specifically. We have an electricity one that they can focus on. That's There's, what this is? Yes, that's for, our Vanagraph yeah. generator here, and this is one of the activities that they can do in their program. Okay. So they're all interactive, and again, they all relate to the SOLs, so they're all very science oriented. So when groups of, if a teacher is watching this or someone who hits the school mm -hmm. is watching this, they can call the museum and mm -hmm. they can basically they pay so much per child. Yep. They bring, but, but they have like a certain amount of time in the museum, an they hour do. and a half? They do. It's a two and a half hour visit if okay. they choose to do an educational program because all of our programs are 30 to 40 minutes each. Okay, so they get to take the kids all over the museum, yep. but then they can break visit. the kids into smaller classes mm -hmm. and bring them in here for a class. Yep. One of these neat, finding sort of an innovative more inter I guess more entertaining approach to science yes. and you get it's a way it's a way to interact and again they're learning without actually knowing that they're learning because mm -hmm. they're seeing rockets shooting off they're seeing alka seltzer blowing up but they don't realize that they're and learning about love chemical reactions I love watching <laughs> chemical reactions let's be honest so <laughs> so now this uh, what is this called again? This is the Van de Graaff generator. Okay. And it creates electricity using friction and rubber and conducting metal. And uh, what they do is the kids can get on the stool and they, um, they can see the lightning happen or they could also have their hair stand up. Can you demonstrate? Yeah, something? yeah, but you have to stand up on there. Okay. And I assume that can be seen. So and you have to stand up on it because if you don't, then you're gonna be standing on the base. And I'll get shot. And um, can you reach that far? I can. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on a rubber glove and we talk to the kids about the different things that conduct electricity, different mm. things that insulate, so they understand the different key SOL terms. And again, they're just assuming that I'm wearing a rubber glove because I don't wanna get shocked. <laughs> and then what you do is you put your hand flat on there and I turn it on, your hand, the hair flies up. Cool. So, yeah, you wanna try it? Yeah, yeah. you gotta put your hand on. Okay. Okay, I'll push it closer to you. Okay. And we're gonna turn it on. And your hair is gonna start to stick up, so you have to kinda go like this. And it's great for your hair. It's uh, a wonderful way to get all of those, those chemicals going back in. And then I turn it off and you can put your hand off and then I always have to tell them oh. that we have to take away the static shock so that way I can touch it again without having a problem. That's cool. So that's one of the activities they get to do in the electricity program and that's that one's specifically designed for fourth graders. Mm -hmm. um, so the fourth graders can come in, they can go through, the teachers can walk them through. We have a uh, scavenger hunt if they want to make it a little more interesting for them, self-guided while they're here. And then they can come in and choose to do a program for a small extra fee. Okay. What I didn't know about museum educators, I mean, most of you are really, you're, you're trained. I mean, you have, you're very well educated. You're like trained to be teachers. I mean, yes. You, for instance, I understand that you have a master's degree. I do. Or? I have a master's in history. So I'm teaching science programs with a master's <laughs> in history. But it's it's a great way, um, you know, our, our, our boss, our supervisor likes mm. to tell us that, you know, everybody can learn the science. It's mm. very easy to understand. We just have to kind of follow in for a little while. And um, we usually have a couple of weeks where you just follow along. You kind of back somebody up mm. and then you get to go into the programs, you're observed. And then we, we, are, we are trained to, we go to conferences. Yeah, we go to workshops. There's... We, we have the certification to do it, so it's right. it's fun. So now if someone's watching this and they're interested in finding out more about the program, mm -hmm. so you bring a group in here, what should they do? Uh, there's two things they can do. They can either call us at mm -hmm. the museum, it's 393-5258, or they can go to our website, childrensmuseumva.com. Oh, and right. all of the information is there. All of our programs, you can call and talk to anybody in education. If they don't want to do a program with us and just want to come experience the museum, they can easily do that and they can book that program as well. All right. Thank you so much All right. for taking Thank you. time to talk to yes, us. Yes, sir. Thanks I appreciate so it. I hope you guys come in and have fun with us All in the future. Right. We will. All right. <laughs> Thanks. When we return to Portsmouth now, we'll take a look at a very special education program offered this past summer by the Children's Museum of Virginia. And we'll talk to some of the students who took part in it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. 
Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 through 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Welcome back to Portsmouth Now and a look at the education programs offered by museums here. The Children's Museum of Virginia is home to the Beasley Planetarium. This past July, the museum offered a special two-week planetarium day camp slash internship to Portsmouth High School students. Back in June, several weeks before the program began, we visited Planetarium Director Dan Boring to find out more about it. Okay. Dan, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, so tell us about this idea for this, this camp that you have. Well, it's kind of going, uh, it's, it's taking on a life of its own, actually. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of set up initially as a, an extension of our district's STEM program, mm -hmm. science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yeah. And uh, when we started thinking about it, we thought about getting some uh, workplace skills in there, so the idea of an internship came out from that. Oh, okay. And now what, what grade is this? What age group is this? That's for Portsmouth mm -hmm. Public School students, grades 9 through 12, rising 9th graders through rising 12th graders. Okay. Now, are these students that are, have an interest in science specifically? Right. They went through an application process, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the parts of the process uh, was an essay on, uh, on, on why they wanted to be part of it. and. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with their science content mm -hmm. and background, yeah. How many kids are, are there? Uh, the, we have 16 slots. Uh, okay. The idea is to take 16 slots from the 16 students, we're gonna build two planetariums, uh, each eight per, <laughs> eight per build team. And then from those build teams, there'll be uh, two teams that'll come from there, they'll be producing their own shows. So we should have two planetariums and eight planetarium shows produced at the end of the of the dome quest uh, internship okay so now so the audience understands building a planetarium what exactly does that entail well it's building a planetarium the one we have behind us right here yeah. is a little more expensive <laughs> this thing uh, is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars and the idea is to build a planetarium that uh, can house up to 15 to 20 people and uh, okay. from from materials you can get at Lowe's basically that's cool. All right. Okay. So uh, now, once these are built, will they be? They'll be doing shows and their right. demonstrations. Right. Uh, the second week of the intern camp, uh, we and Dome Quest camp, we should have them pr uh, present their shows to the public. That's fantastic. And then they'll be open to the public. Anyone can come in. And right. Anyone, any guest from the museum can stop in and see what the show is like. Okay. Now you mentioned internships too, as as part of this. So what would, what, what's that aspect of the program? Well, it's it's the uh, tw one of the big things in STEM is to develop a good workforce and, mm -hmm. and develop skills that are necessary for industry. And and one of those things is just to be used to having a job. Uh, and th as an intern at the uh, museum, they'll be uh, clocking in just like a, like a museum uh, okay. employee would. They'll be uh, dressing in the same manner as the, as the uh, regular employees and uh, presenting themselves to the public in, in the same way. Okay. So uh, th they are going to be doing the, the work of, of a museum employee. For so that, will they be weeks. working in this planetarium? Well, part of it, we have three different uh, pronged approach. One is to work alongside me in the planetarium while mm -hmm. we're still doing public shows during those two weeks in July. Uh, they'll greet the guests, uh, start the shows, uh, answer questions and things like that. On the second floor of the museum, we have an exhibit called My Backyard, and part of it is, is dedicated to the sky above mm -hmm. the backyard. Uh, they'll be doing live interpretive shows in there using an iPad app, uh, a live demonstration of that. And the third thing is to represent uh, the building process. Mm -hmm. So we'll be building uh, side by side, the two domes in uh, art room one and two upstairs, uh, glass windows, so it's living in a fishbowl. <laughs> they'll be explaining what's happening in the fishbowl. That and, is fantastic. And they'll be cycling through it. But th yeah. This is, seems like a great opportunity for kids, especially this young. Oh, I think so. I mean, yeah. this is something I would assume you know, a junior or senior in high school. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, you know, the, the, we the, you know, the freshmen, the rising freshmen, eighth graders past yeah. year, they've, uh, they're, see, we'll see how they work out, see what their we, medal's worth. 
Okay, we will, be, we will be back with our cameras then in July to see how the things go, and we'll catch up with you guys later and find out how it went. Great. Thanks for joining Thank us today. You're welcome. So, how did the program turn out? To answer that question, after it was over, we visited Dan, and we sat down with three students who participated. My name is Caleb Edwards, and I'm a rising sophomore at Churchland High School. Uh, my name is Ruby. I go to Woodrow Wilson, and I'm going to be a senior. My name is Amanda Jones. I'm going to Churchland High School. I've been, I'm going to be a sophomore this coming fall. Okay. So how did these high school students find out about the program? And why would they spend two weeks of their summer vacation to participate in a science-based day camp? My parents and my, my sisters, they encouraged me to do it because it would be a good opportunity. And it was, it was really fun. It was my old earth science teacher. He was like, hey, you should go sign up for this. I was like, <laughs> All right, I guess so. I doubt I'll get in, but let's try it. My teacher, uh, Ms. Fields, had a lasting impression on me. The way that she was so into her students and how she she was so determined to help us with whatever it was. And so she introduced it to our class and I was like, okay, so if she's telling us this and I think I might look into it. And I already had a, um, I don't know how to put this, but I was already interested in astronomy, you know, the way that the planets work, what they're made of, their orbits, all of that stuff. So I thought, why not do an internship where I could learn about it more myself and also teach younger children about this. I think the camp went uh, ex extremely well. Um, Every one of our major goals that we set out to do, uh, we accomplished and, and the kids did a great job. Uh, all the way from the workplace skills that we mentioned before, give them a chance to, to really get uh, their hands kind of into the work environment. Uh, they also had the, the STEM uh, component that we're looking at also. They built their planetariums, we built two of them. When they told us we'd be building a planetarium, I didn't realize we'd actually be building a planetarium <laughs> and like present shows and have to talk to everyone. So it was really great. So every day we would go into the big Beasley Planetarium and Mr. Bork, he would present a, a sort of a movie or he would teach us about um, the stars and the basics of astronomy. And then after that we would go on upstairs to the art room and then we would start building the planetarium. We put our blood, sweat and tears into it, literally. <sighs> It was a lot of measuring and we had to cut out the wood and paint it and get it all together and we had to make sure it was really tight because we couldn't allow any light in. We had to f do one measurement and then go back and make sure it's right, place it up there to see if it fits and then go back and measure it again. It was kind of hard once you got into that process because you learned that it was a lot more to it than you thought. We started off by having pieces of wood, you know, all cut in different sizes and we had to screw them together. We had to paint the pieces of wood. We had to sand them down so we wouldn't get any more splinters. And the hardest part was probably doing the dome because the triangles had to be exact or it wouldn't fit together at all. The most interesting part I thought about the planetarium was actually the dome. We had uh, pieces of cardboard and we actually had to cut them ourselves, You know, measure them, lots of math was used into this. And we had to place them all across the top of the um, planetarium. So, you know, if there was one little inch that was off, we had to restart the whole thing. It was definitely an interesting experience. Yeah, I think we did pretty good. <laughs> and there's a few, there's a few gaps, but not a lot actually. We did the final assembly uh, of one of them on the floor because of space. We just couldn't fit to them. They were bigger than we thought. Um, also, they uh, got to program their, uh, their uh, software and do four shows. They did four public showings. Also got to make my own planetarium movie. We got to make our own idea of what um, we want to present. Someone in our group suggested nebulas because they're really cool and interesting. And then our um, instructor, Mr. Boric, suggested like not just nebulas, but the entire life cycle of a star. So that's what we ended up going with. Star formation and the North Star, we put those together in a little five minute video. This was actually made on an app called uh, Worldwide Telescope. And it was on the Big Dipper and how stars form. So we took, you know, the, uh, the audience back to Charleston, South Carolina, one of the places where the Underground Railroad was. And we told them how Harriet Tubman and other slaves and abolitionists used the Underground Railroad and the North Star to find their way to freedom to the North. And we also taught them, you know, about nebulas and, and whatnot and how a star dies and all that good stuff. So it seemed like they really liked it. Um, uh, they worked uh, downstairs in the Beasley Planetarium and also on the floor in a couple exhibits doing, doing docent work. And they did a fantastic job. 
we got to work with the actual planetarium downstairs and start a show and everything and just basically went through that, greet the people, make sure they get out and start the show. And we also worked in um, Worldwide Telescope, which was the program on the computer, and My Backyard. There's this room called My Backyard, and there we actually have a view of the night sky. We um, connected an iPad and projected it up on the screen for the kids to see. So we could put in any single date you wanted to, such as your birthday or, you know, 4th of July, and we could look at the constellations that would be out that night, the planets, uh, you know, anything in the sky, you could see it. I liked interacting with the kids. I was a little nervous, like, am, are they gonna be able to understand this? Am I getting this across okay? They're gonna give me this like dumbfounded look, like, <laughs> I don't know, I have no clue. But they actually, like, they ask questions and a lot of them are really interested. The kids who are like really into it, it was really cool to try and let them learn something new. Even though they might not really get all of it right now, but like in the future when they have a teacher, then um, they'll remember some of the stuff. I'd like to thank Mr. Bork and Mr. Lumanowski for being such amazing teachers and instructors. I love the teachers, I really enjoy them. They're quirky, they're funny, they like joke around, they're not all serious, but they do want you to get your work done. Mr. Bork and Mr. Lewandowski, they were, they were amazing, they were really nice, and um, they taught us a lot. They were really patient too. I think that this program not only gives uh, young students in Portsmouth something to do in the summer, you know, if they don't have anything to do. But it also teaches them how to work well with others, how to work well by themselves, uh, how to work well with, you know, younger children. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great thing to do, definitely. It was really great. It was a good experience. And I would suggest it for other people, definitely, especially if they're into astronomy, science of any sort, get their interning done. I mean, it helps out a lot. I would say definitely do it. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's, it was the best camp that I ever did, not only because it was something fun, but it was because they actually put you to work. And it's a hands-on project. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's really fun and you get to meet other people who are on the same level as you. Mm. And because you, they have certain standards that you, need to do, that you need to have in order to get into this program. And so you can be assured that the people who are in this program, they're on the same level as you, so they're like-minded. Thanks to our teachers, definitely thanks to the uh, Beasley Foundation for supporting us and letting us go through and actually do the internship. It was funded through a Beasley grant, so you know, way grants go, you never, hopefully it will be. Uh, in the future, uh, the, the, you know, there are other things we're looking for them to do in the future is, is possibly having a second layer of this would to be uh, programming the actual ATM uh, for programming that we use in the planetarium to write a show, produce a show and show it in the, the larger planetarium. It was an amazing experience. I just want to say thank you to everyone who gave me the opportunity, Mr. Borg, Mr. Lewandowski. It was, it was so amazing. Oh God, so amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> More Portsmouth Now is coming up in just a moment, so stay tuned. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Then no lo puedo hacer. DMC, life in your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb, just keeping it real. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Welcome back to Portsmouth Now. The Virginia Sports Hall of Fame is one of Portsmouth's largest and most unique museums. Naturally, when one thinks of sports, one thinks of recreation. But the Hall of Fame also has an education department and its educators are developing and presenting programs which use sports to teach science and math to area students. I'm joined by Elena Trafney, who is the Education Coordinator for the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame. Thanks for joining me, Elena. Uh, thanks for having me. So, okay, Sports Hall of Fame, 
we think of all this sort of thing. We don't necessarily think of education classes no. as the Sports Hall of Fame. Tell us more about that. Well, if you know sports, you know that in sports, math and science is everywhere from, <laughs> I know, field measurements, court measurements, to the statistics from fractions to decimals, percents of shot percentages, everything like that. Science, the physics behind hitting the ball or throwing the ball, it's just everywhere. So mm -hmm. we just took those concepts and broke them down to the basic levels for elementary school kids and middle school kids. So, okay, so the, the schools can come in here, they can take a tour, but then they also like have a class yeah. in something science related. Yes, science or math, yeah. So like the science classes, are there, is there a particular, what are some of the names, I guess, of the sure, courses? Sure, sure. Um, well, one, for science specifically, we have one that's called Isaac Newton's Roller Coaster Emotion, but for each law, we break it down and compare it to a sport such as baseball or golf or so Isaac football. Newton. Yeah, <laughs> pretty sport. much. Um, as for math, we have this new program. Actually, this is our second year doing it. Um, it's called Math Academy. So for each grade level, we take it, take a math SOL and we break it down and compare it and relate it to a sport. So for second grade, it's fractions and um, breaking them down into numerator, denominator, shooting, mm -hmm. how many successful baskets did you get in compared to the whole number or how many shots you had. So, um, and then fifth grade, we do mean scale where we actually do all the data and plot it and on a graph and mm -hmm. make able to analyze it and compare it. So it's okay, so do, are, this is open. This is something that schools can sign up yes, for. Yes, yes. Any school can come in. Um, it's part of their group admission. You get this education program. So it's mm -hmm. about 40 minutes of their field trip here. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be in the classroom with me or one of the education. Um, teachers here at the Hall of Fame, and then uh, they get to go upstairs and do the interactive. So it is part of it. Okay, now educators, for just yourself, what, yeah. what is your background in education? Um, I am a graduate from Old Dominion University mm -hmm. um, in health and education, I'm sorry, physical, health and physical education, sorry. <laughs> we, let me take that again, because we can talk. Yeah, sorry, that. I was like, oh my God, can't even talk. Okay. No, no, no problem. So uh, what is your background as far as education goes? Um, I am a graduate from Old Dominion University. I have my um, bachelor's in um, physical and health education. So um, I have that sport background in me, and then I also have the, the education teaching part too. So. Okay, so I mean, did you, were you, the idea was to get a job, I guess, yes. in, in the school system? Yes, that's, the original plan was to find a teaching position in the um, school system. Um, however, I stumbled upon this job and just fell in love with it. So I'm glad that you welcomed me with open arms. Oh, that's great. So. That's great. I mean, it's really invented, this mm -hmm. whole approach. I would think that most people think, well, I don't want to take, I don't think that physical education is on the SOLs necessarily. So I guess a lot of people wouldn't make the connection that they can actually come, come here. Come here, yes. And using this. Yes, yes. Definitely. Reinforce the SOLs with their, to their students. Exactly. And that's what we try to do is to show them that um, the SOLs can are directly linked to, um, in this museum, what we do here is directly linked into those core subjects that they go over every day in classrooms. So. Well, with school starting up this month, September, uh, do you have any special events come up here at the museum? We do. Um, specifically for teachers and PTA members, we have a teacher day on September 14th. It's a Saturday. Um, it's free admission for teachers and PTA members just to come in, meet me and the education staff, and we kind of show them how what we can do for them if they ever want to come take a field trip here and see how um, those as well as directly link into their classroom and um, how we can be a service of them. And then we also have on September 17th from 11 to 2, um, we have a day dedicated to preschoolers, so our preschool <laughs> day. We're going to have um, some activity stations set up where we can get the kids kind of up and moving and applying uh, motor skills or um, listening skills, just working on those basic stuff for them and kind of wear them out for mom, <laughs> mom and dad so they're ready for nap time by the time they head I'm out sure of here. I'm sure mom and dad appreciate that. <laughs> I know. All right, thanks for taking time and telling us, telling us about this. Now, if people want more information, is there a number they can call or a website they can go Certainly, to? Certainly, you can visit us at bshfm.com and um, specifically education, there's a tab at the top, you can click on that or you can call us at 393-8031. Um, so. well, all right, well, thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for our show today. Every month here in Portsmouth, there are dozens of activities sponsored by the museums, but also throughout the city. To find out about any of them, simply log on to www.portsvaevents.com and then come to Portsmouth, where if you give us a day, we'll give you a vacation. I'm Rob Lauer. Join me next time for another episode of Portsmouth Now.